So in this video, I'm going to be taking my uh, Lum Geophone and seeing if I can create some interesting cinematic sounds out of it. Some like hits, sweepy things, transition-y sort of stuff. So here's a little sound demo now. I put it to some footage that I got from Pexels. I just mosh them together in After Effects to create like a little fake trailer. So what I've got here is one of my um, symbols from my drum kit. I've also added little um, SM57 here just to pick up like the bite from the sounds that I'm making because I've got the geophon stuck to the cymbal stand. So it's picking up the sound when it resonates through the stand. But the thing with the geophon is it doesn't really pick up much of like the high end. So that's why I've added this little one here just so we can pick up a little bit of the top. I'll give some demonstrations of the bow now on the edge of the cymbal. And I'll also show you how I use this little drumstick, not for hitting, but for like some scraping. So here's a drumstick. So what I did with this is I slide it along the top of the cymbal, right on the tip, and you'll feel the drumstick sort of bite onto the cymbal. It's like it's sort of sticking to it. That's the amount of pressure you want to get it like resonating. So I'll demonstrate it now. So just to demonstrate they don't need like loads of fancy symbols, here's like a, uh, what is this called? Baking tray, <laughs> baking tray. So I'll just magnet the geophone onto that, get my bow, <laughs> shit, <laughs> magnet the geophone onto it again, get my bow and then just bow the edge of it. So after I finished editing all of the sounds, I brought them into Cubase and started playing around with layering up. Um, so this one, I've got some other recordings that I had done of the Geophon stuck on an oven grill. So that's in my oven. That one was sort of like, it's quite reverby actually. So I'll play it now. So that one sounded kind of cool on its own actually. So that's just sending some audio to an FX channel, which has delays on it. And that sort of helped making it a bit more stereo, kind of obvious, but I noticed with the Geophon, it was just recording mono. So I added some delay and some reverb on a lot of the sounds to make it a bit more, well, to make it wider, instead of it just all being um, static and in the middle. So after that, I layered up some sounds from the cymbal scrapes. So I used the SM57 and the Geophon uh, recording and blended them together. So if I do that. So again, I ad added like tremolo -y stuff and vibrato and some weirdness, just so it went a bit wider on the sound. And if I show you the first bounce of that, so this was the first bounce with those sounds all blended together. So it ended up being like this sort of creepy, it's a bit like you're in a weird cave. <laughs> Not a cave. <laughs> what the fuck am I on about? It's like a creepy spell sort of cast. Something that you might hear in Skyrim or Oblivion. You're in some necromancer's cave and they're doing some weird spell ritual thing. That's what I thought it sounded like. So now we get on to doing some of the thuds. So again, I was using Realm for this. So I put in some of the uh, boom hits that I'd made. So I made some hits from the Geophone. Um, so that's like hitting on bits of metal. I put that into my Cubase sampler and I just started playing different keys on the keyboard that I've got. You can do it down here as well, but it's just easier when you have a keyboard because you can play multiple ones at the same time. So I really love doing uh, resampling. So taking the sounds that I bounced out, putting it into like a sampler and then playing it again. This is because the sounds play at different speeds and different pitches and it creates a lot of sick textures. It's a bit like just octave stacking when you get this 
create another one then put it up an octave or put it down an octave to make it a bit meatier it's kind of doing the same thing but you're just getting to play in all of the sounds and with a velocity sensitive keyboard you can play in like the lower ones harder the higher ones a little bit softer and then just bring in another one a little bit later on and it's sort of like performing the sound again but yeah it's mainly to get some really cool interesting textures so i'll play the the sampler tracks <laughs> And it's got a bunch of effects on there, so it's, it's quite funky. So these ones I thought were like really cool little silo hits. You know, the sort of grain silos you see um, on farms. <laughs> on farms. Right. So the other one was like a boomy kind of hit. Again, I've got Realm on it because it's just seemed to be working quite well for me on this um, project. So this is a similar sort of thing. I put in some other hits, some like other thuds and just played around with the effects till I got something a little bit different. Again, this is why I really like doing the stacking and playing in the sampler because just playing one of these, like for instance, it sounds cool on its own, but it seems a little bit empty to me. I just like having them stacked up. Another thing which I discovered were these like Tycho kind of hits. So this was with Realm again. So it was mainly from the effects again and playing around with it in the sampler and playing around with it quite high up on the keyboard, um, higher up than I was thinking I should because I was initially going for some boomy sounds, but then I stumbled across this and I thought, oh, that sounds pretty sick. So playing them at like different times sort of gives you like drum flams. And I thought that was quite good at making some high end ensemble percussion that I could put on top of the low, like boomy hits. I really enjoy playing around with Transient Master. This is a native instruments one, but there are lots of other ones out there. Uh, it just helps blast the shit out of the, the Transient. That's pretty much it. Uh, so it was just like making the hits smack a little bit more. And then this was a similar one, but instead on this one, I had the Tycho hits a little bit more reverby. Really like that one in particular, because um, it's like a little drum roll before the hit. This was another one which I was just playing around with too. So it's taking like one of the stingery sort of sounds I made previously and then bringing that into the sampler and then blending it with itself and adding all different pitches and times and some more effects. Ram again, big up Ram. So again, this was kind of quite basic, this one. It was just taking one of the cymbal scrapes I'd done and the drum scrapes, blending them together and then bringing them into the sampler again. And I'll play that now. So that's where I got with those. So now I'll open up the project that I did some, a little bit of sound design to and show you what I did with these like final sounds in the project when I was doing sound to picture. So here's the project I'd done some of the sound design on. I built it up of like what I had. So it was like hits and the reversed sort of stuff, the cymbal scrapes and other like textural bits. The Tycho hits, I wanna focus on that bit first because they sounded really good when they got layered up. So those are those little slappy Tycho hits that I showed you before, but um, they're layered up and also pitched. So these top ones are pitched up, which added a bit more slappiness to them. And these ones are just as they were. I also didn't put them perfectly in line with each other. So it was a little bit more like an ensemble playing. They're all going to a group channel, which has some like saturation on it, um, compression and a little bit of reverb. So that worked really well with these boom sounds as well. 
So yeah, the boomy ones filled a lot of the low end. I really like them. So it's just like building up a big ensemble of sounds. Also over here, I had some of the like scrape sounds and also just had the tails from some of the Tycho hits. So without any of the hit sounds, it was just like it was whooshing into it. So I did really like them, but without this final SM57 one, it seemed like it was lacking just a little bit. I was quite happy that I recorded the SM57 mic at the same time, because like I keep on saying throughout this, the Geophon was picking up some really sick low end sounds. It just needed a little bit of the high end captured to sprinkle a little bit of spice on top of it. So yeah, that was pretty much it for this quick little sound to picture jobby. I didn't do too much. It was just a demonstration of the sounds that I got. I thought it'd be more interesting to see it to picture instead of me scrolling through the files of sounds that I've made. It seems more interesting to see the sounds being used in context. I hope this video was helpful in getting you inspired to create some like weird and wacky sounds from your uh, geophone if you're lucky enough to get one. I think I'm going to try and push some of the sounds that I've got a little bit further and get a little bit out of the constraints of just using the geophone because I, th I reckon um, the geophone was really good at creating some awesome low end elements but it was kind of hard to get a lot of the top end out of it. It worked quite well with some of the hits like uh, the Tyco kind of hits but I think that was down to a lot more of the processing so I think the geophone like paired together with some rock impacts or some wood impacts or some other really clean recordings of cymbals and screechy things, screechy bits of metal. I think using it as like an element to the sound will really help build up some really cool sound design, <laughs> if that makes sense. Anyway, um, if you've got a geophone, I urge you to go out and uh, experiment with it because you can get some wicked sounds out of it. There's a lot more things I want to try with it, like maybe some engines. I don't know if I saw it on one of the field recording group pages the other day. I just don't want to put it too much in harm because it's hard to get one. There was one, I think, in the Geophon Facebook group. There was someone who had buried them. So I'm quite interested in trying um, some experiments with that, maybe with some like rocks and some boulders, setting up like a bunch of mics around like dropping boulders and rocks and then having the geophone buried right underneath it to catch some like sub elements. I think that might be quite cool. Yeah, and if you have any other suggestions on funky things to do with the geophone, I'm all ears because I just want to play around with it a lot, see what other weird shit I can make. <laughs> so yeah, if you uh, like the video, drop me a like or a subscribe or share it with your homies. That would mean a lot. I post more on my Instagram page so if you want to go and give that a follow, I'll link it up on the screen so you might see what bits and bobs I'm up to before I actually make a video on YouTube because like I said in a uh, couple of other videos, I'm a bit of a long head on it. But yeah, safe as cakes. Have a good one and I'll catch you in the next vid.